Let's take a look at the number of valence electrons for copper, that's Cu. We'll start by looking at the electron configuration, and then we can use that to figure out how many valence electrons we have. Copper is a little bit tricky, so we need to be careful. So in general, on the periodic table, we have this trend for valence electrons. Group one, they all have one valence electron. Group two, two. We skip the transition metals here, then we have group three, four, and so on. Copper, that's right here, and it's a transition metal. So it's a little bit tricky. And an additional problem is that copper has a unique electron configuration. It's one of the exceptions, one of the important exceptions that you should know for school. So this is our electron configuration. If you need help with this, there's a video that I've linked to in the description and at the end of the video, how to get here for copper. It's helpful if we look at this in condensed notation. So the noble gas before copper is argon that has 18 electrons. So we would say that this right here, 10 plus 8, 18, that's argon and then we'll just replace all of this with AR. So this is the condensed notation for copper. Let's move everything down a little bit. So one definition for valence electrons when it comes to transition metals is that a valence electron for a transition metal, it's the electrons that are outside of the noble gas core. This is the noble gas core. So for copper, we could say that there are 10 plus one, there are 11 valence electrons, and that would satisfy this definition. When you look at copper and how it reacts, it only forms two ions, Cu plus and Cu2 plus. So even though it has 11 valence electrons according to our definition here, really in practice it only loses one or two when it forms chemical bonds. But in answer to our question, based on this definition, copper has 11 valence electrons. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.